This is attorney David Petrosky. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing the extension of California's eviction moratorium as a result of COVID-19, the new law that was just passed and signed into law by the governor of California on January 29th, 2021, is known as SB91. Please understand that this information is not to be considered as legal advice. The laws surrounding evictions in California are going through uh, many transitions on an ongoing basis, and uh, it's in your best interest to consult with your own legal counsel before deciding on a proper course of action. Okay, so what is SB 91? Well, it's a continuation of California's statewide eviction moratorium that was first introduced in AB 3088 last August. Much of what applied under AB 3088 is still applicable today, and this video is not meant to uh, discuss AB 3088 again. You should go back and watch our video that we posted on that uh, legislation because much of it is still in effect today. However, under SB 91, there are some additional tenant protections as well as an extension of the moratorium that was defined under AB 3088. And under the new SB 91, the eviction restrictions do now extend through June 30th, 2021. The transition time period, which under AB 3088 was from September 1st, 2020 through January 31st, 2021, has now been extended so that the transition time period under the law covers September 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2021. So there is that extension of several months. Many of the requirements for the uh, non-payment of rent cases uh, for the transition time period do remain in effect today, meaning a 15-day notice would be required along with an unsigned declaration and a notice from the state of California and the tenant would have to pay 25% of the rent that's incurred between the months of September 1st, 2020 and June 30th, 2021 in order to be protected from an eviction. It's important to note that SB 91 is not a full blanket 100% ban on evictions. There are still some evictions that can move forward now. And to sum up what types of evictions can move forward now, if the tenant was guilty of an unlawful detainer prior to March 1st, 2020, those can go forward now. Non-payment of rent cases can also go forward if they're not COVID-related cases or if the tenant fails to return the unsigned declaration to the landlord and pay the 25% that's due thereunder. Also, uh, other types of at-fault evictions can go forward right now. Uh, such as material lease violations, uh, illegal activity at the property, using the property for an unlawful purpose, causing a nuisance, and other at-fault reasons, those evictions are allowed to proceed right now. And no-fault evictions are also allowed with uh, many different restrictions. One of the most common type of a no-fault eviction is owner or family member move-in. However, some jurisdictions, such as L.A. County and L.A. City, both have additional restrictions in effect which do not allow for any type of no-fault eviction during the uh, COVID eviction uh, moratorium period. Um, another uh, possibility to evict a tenant right now uh, is if the landlord is selling the single-family home can't be used if it's a multi-unit apartment building or something like that, but if there's a single family home that's being sold and certain requirements are met and the new owner is going to be living at the property, that would be grounds for an eviction under SB 91. Even if the landlord has no intention to bring forth an unlawful detainer action right now, uh, the new law SB 91 does require uh, if the tenant owes any COVID debt as of February 1st, 2021. So if the tenant owes money going all the way back to March of 2020 up through February 1st, 2021. And again, even if the landlord is not going to file an eviction against the tenant right now, the landlord is required to provide a notice to the tenant no later than February 28th, 2021 which outlines tenant rights under the COVID rules, and that form is available on the state and other websites. 
SB 91 also places restrictions on late fees or increased fees. And a couple examples is that if the tenant owes COVID-related debt and has submitted a declaration of COVID-19 related financial distress, the landlord cannot, one, charge or collect late fees, or two, increase fees that are charged to the tenant or charge the tenant fees for services previously provided by the landlord without charge. Now, it's also important to note that the landlord is not uh, found to be in violation of any rule. If the rental agreement uh, says, for example, um, a gem use is included, but because of some temporary government order or rule, uh, gems have to temporarily close down. If that happens and the landlord is thus required to close the gem, the landlord is not found to be in default of any uh, rule or regulation. If the landlord wishes to avail himself or herself of the small claims court, those actions can begin as of August 1st, 2021, which is an extension of the prior rule under AB 3088. You'll need to check local rent control laws to see if there's any extension of those time frames. The landlord is not able to use any portion of the security deposit to satisfy COVID-related debt during the tenancy unless the tenant agrees in writing. Uh, however, once the tenancy is over and the tenant has moved out, the landlord is allowed to use part or all of the security deposit to satisfy any unpaid rent. Um, furthermore, the landlord cannot apply a monthly rental payment that is received from the tenant to any COVID debt other than the prospective rent unless agreed in writing by the tenant. And this deviates from the normal rule. Under normal rules, generally, if a tenant makes a, a payment, that rent payment is applied to the earliest past due rent. But under this modification, if the landlord receives a payment from the tenant, landlord is supposed to apply that rent to the prospective rent only, again, unless the tenant agrees otherwise. For some potentially good news for many landlords and tenants, help is on the way. Um, to qualify for rental assistance from the government, the household income cannot be more than 80% of the area median income, or AMI. This means that tenants whose household income is above 80% of the AMI won't qualify and landlords won't receive any funds from the government in this situation. Round one priority is going to be given to tenants whose household income is less than 50% of the AMI. Round two priority will go to communities that are disproportionately impacted by COVID-19. And round three priority will go to everyone else who qualify under the program. Rental assistance is to be used for rental arrears, that's the priority also for prospective rent payments and utilities. Applications for the rental assistance program is going to be allowed to be initiated by either the landlord or the tenant. And it's important to note that both landlord and tenant are going to need to work together for a successful program. Sometimes that can be quite difficult, especially when um, the landlord and tenant are not on the best of terms. Payments under the plan are going to be given directly to landlords. Landlords are not required under the law to participate in this rental assistance program. However, there's an incentive for landlords to participate. If a landlord wishes to participate in the program, the program would pay up to 80% of the past due rent from March 2020 through March 2021. The landlord would have to agree, however, to waive the remaining 20% of the rent and not pursue that 20% down the line. If the landlord decides not to participate in this program, then the program would pay the landlord 25% of the rent instead of 80%. And the reason why uh, the government would be paying the 25% is that that would bar the landlord from uh, proceeding forward with an eviction right now because of the 25% rule. Rental assistance payments may also include prospective rent payments for the months of April, May, and June 2021. And most importantly, applications under this program should be available no later than March 15, 2021. And again, either the landlord or the tenant should be able to apply for the program. 
For more information, I encourage you to read our SB91 blog article that was published on January 31st, 2021. Also bookmark our Landlord and Evictions blog. If you need further assistance and want information on evictions for your particular matter, we represent landlords only. Landlords can go onto our website at attorneydavid.com to schedule a phone consultation. Uh, you can also follow us on Facebook or Twitter to receive updates on evictions throughout California. Thank you so much.